Coming up on Eagle Vision News, we see how much you know about Thanksgiving. And Biola students audition for their 15 minutes of fame. Plus, we give you a look at the biggest movie of 2014. All this and more, next. Hi, welcome to Eagle Vision News. I'm Tiffany Brevard. And I'm Natalie Grace. Let's take a look at this week's top stories. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel resigned on Monday in the midst of several global crises the U.S. faces in the Middle East and West Africa. President Obama called Hagel no ordinary Secretary of Defense and praised him for his role during a major transition period in the military. Hagel is the 24th Secretary of Defense who started out as a young Army sergeant in Vietnam. He will remain on the job until his successor is confirmed by the U.S. Senate. A dramatic police chase on Monday was captured on helicopter footage showing a white SUV weaving through oncoming traffic and blowing past traffic signs, in some moments reaching speeds of over 100 miles per hour. The pursuit began with a report of a possible drive-by shooting in Newhall. Footage shows the SUV nearly missing pedestrians and making several U-turns, trying to evade police. The chase ended in Culver City where one of the suspects fled and barricaded himself for several hours on a rooftop before surrendering. In a highly anticipated decision, a Missouri grand jury voted not to indict Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson in the August shooting incident that left 18-year-old Michael Brown dead. Jurors discussed the evidence for two days before reaching their decision, in a case that has been largely defined by racial overtones. A large group of protesters gathered outside the Ferguson Police Department before the decision, all while police armed with helmets and riot shields stood watch. President Obama called for peaceful protests shortly after the decision, even while some protesters threw rocks and vandalized a police car. Bale's campus has been a buzz over the announcement of a reality TV show focusing on student life here at Biola. Reporter Josh Cristianto has the details. A proposed new reality TV show at Biola might be in the works soon, but it's actually not a reality TV show as it was advertised before. Producers call it a documentary series or docu-series. They came up with this idea of um, how can we ask the big questions of the day to college-age students. Yes TV and Tricord Media, both Christian-based companies in Canada, are aiming to create more than your average TV series. They're going to find and identify characters, people, and their stories, and then they're going to follow them around and they're going to ask them different questions um, about their faith, about the world, about uh, their experience in life. About 300 people signed up for auditions last week. Students of all types showed off their humor and personalities in hopes of being casted for the new show. I think there are a lot of people auditioning and I have a very small shot, but I take every chance auditioning for something that I can get for experience. So, so I looked under frequently asked questions on the website that had all the information and it says, where's something that like best describes you? So I decided a banana suit. Now, open auditions have been taking place for the last three days now, but students at Viola are having mixed reactions about having a reality TV show on campus. I don't know. I'm a little skeptical. Um, I'm hoping that um, they shoot Viola in a positive light, um, or that they shoot us accurately anyway. I thought it sounded really cool, but the posters didn't really give a lot of info about it. If the show goes through, producers say filming will start in spring 2015, and the show will air in Canada in the fall. As for the title of the show, the real dorm girls of Alpha Hall probably won't be it. Josh Cristianto, Eagle Vision News. And now we have Tori Andreas here with us to give us the latest in the world of entertainment. Tori, the new Hunger Games movie just came out, right? That's right. Mockingjay Part 1 came out this week with big numbers in the box office. The movie is the third in the Hunger Games series and had the largest opening day of the year with $55 million at the U.S. box office on Friday. Mockingjay Part 1 is just shy of making $130 million total this past weekend. Movies themselves could be getting a whole new look as companies are aiming to bring virtual reality to the cinematic world. Using 3D cameras, cinematic company Jaunt has created a 360 viewing experience of a Paul McCartney concert. The video and audio are then displayed through VR goggles like the Oculus Rift, allowing the viewer to feel like they're actually there. Up until now, the main focus of virtual reality had primarily been video games, but companies like Jaunt plan on bringing viewers straight into 3D concerts, movies, and documentaries. The demo for McCartney's concert is currently available for download on Google Play. While you can experience a virtual beach, a 100-year-old woman was able to visit the actual ocean for the first time in her entire life. 
100-year-old Ruby Holt said that she'd always wanted to go to the beach, but living in Tennessee, she never had the chance. The caretakers at her living facility agreed that she should have the opportunity to see the ocean and contacted the nonprofit group Wish of a Lifetime. Ruby was taken on an all-expense paid trip to the Gulf of Mexico, where she got to walk on the sand for the first time. They also provided her with a motorized wheelchair designed for the beach, allowing her to soak it all in and enjoy the view. That's the most adorable thing I've ever heard in my life. I can't believe that they were able to make her wish come true like that. I know, so cute. I just, I love it. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming in, Tori. Thanks. Well, even though some people are enjoying the beach, it seems like it's starting to cool down a little too much to keep going. We've got Daisy Villanueva here with us to give us our weather. Daisy, are we going to have a warm Thanksgiving this year? Natalie, I will answer your question in just a couple minutes, but first, let's take a look at this picture behind me. This picture was taken in the Philippines, and this island, according to U.S. Travel Magazine, is the world's best and most popular uh, in the world. So for all you students that want to take a, a nice getaway during interterm, you should definitely check out the Philippines. But back to reality, let's take a look at today's temperatures. Today we started off with a chilly and windy 55 in the morning, but as the day progressed, it got to a warm 72, so that's a little bit more above average than what we're used to during November. But as the, as the day ended, it got back to a chilly 53 in the evening with a beautiful sunrise at 633 in the morning, and our days are definitely getting shorter with a sunset at 444 p.m. Now let's take a look at our national satellite. As you can see, all throughout um, the United States, we are going to be having chilly weathers. But over here in Miami, over here in the Tampa area, we, as you can see, it's going to be hot. So they are experiencing warm temperatures, but that doesn't have to, that's not the case with the rest of the country. As you can see, Salt Lake City with a chilly 42, Billings with a 38, and Cut Bank with a low 35 temperatures but for california we will be having 69 76 in los angeles 64 in vegas so things are definitely warming up as we look at this week's weather we could see that to tomorrow we will be having 85 degrees and as the week progresses we are going to be having some cooler temperatures wednesday we'll be having 75 70 but as thursday and friday we will be seeing maybe a slight chance of rain so if you if you're looking for um, those good black friday sales you might want to take an umbrella and definitely a warm jacket but for the rest of the week we'll be having 68 another 68 and 71 starting off the next week that's all i have for you girls back to you thank you daisy with thanksgiving quickly approaching we wanted to see just how much you knew about turkey day so we sent reporter becky lay to find out this week on Evie on the Street, we're going to see what Biola students know about the Thanksgiving holiday. True or false, the first big balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade was Scooby-Doo. I think that's false. False. Right, who do you think it was? Uh, it's not a turkey balloon. <laughs> it was probably maybe like a Snoopy. So true or false, the first football game on Thanksgiving was started by the Detroit Lions. False. It's true. If you could eliminate one traditional Thanksgiving dish, what would it be? Mashed potatoes. Why? I hate mashed potatoes! <laughs> I really don't. And gravy. Gra especially the gravy part. I would elimin eliminate that forever. <laughs> Probably the stuffing. I like it. Just stuffs you. Do you cook the stuffing inside the turkey or do you make it outside the turkey? I do both. I like them all, but I'd have to say maybe cranberry sauce. Like, what is that? Like, it's kind of gross. And if you could pick any person or character to be a balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, who would it be? Barry Manilow. Yeah, why is that? Because he writes the songs that make the whole world sing, and his hair would make a really intricate design. Um, hey Arnold. Yeah, why is that? He's a great cartoon character. So, Natalie, did you know the answer to any of those questions? You know, those were actually really, really hard. Like, especially the Macy's Thanksgiving yeah. Day one, I had no idea about. Me neither. So, hey, good job, you guys, who all <laughs> did that. Way to go. Well, that's all the time that we have for you today, but be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more Biola stories. And as always, if you have any story ideas, feel free to send them to us on any of those websites. Until then, I'm Tiffany Brevard. And I'm Natalie Grace. Have a happy Thanksgiving.